In this video, I'm going to guide you through chapter 5.3, Income Statement. These are the syllabus statements. So the big question is, how is profit made? So profit is usually the objective for most businesses. Profit is your revenue minus your total costs, or your total revenue minus your total costs. A way to increase profit is to increase revenue or increase the selling price or reduce costs of making the products. These are the two ways how profit is made. So the importance of profit and the private sector. The first reason why profit is important is because it rewards successful entrepreneurs for taking the risk that they have taken. Also, customers want their products as it fills the gap in the market. The second reason is that profit is a source of finance. So retained profits are used as a source of finance to reinvest into the business. Sometimes this will mean expansion. Another reason why profit is important is because it is an indicator for success. So it, it is a measurement for success for potential investors to invest even more money into the company and banks will be more willing to lend more money to any successful business. So what is the difference between profit and cash? I have covered this in my cash flow lesson in the description below, but just to recap, cash is immediately available for spending. This is important. The word immediately, more on this later. To give you an example, the fish represents the business, the water, represents the cash and the profit represents the water that will be delivered later on in the tank to the right. So if there is insufficient water in the fish tank, the fish dies. Similar to if there's insufficient cash for a business, the business will go bankrupt despite having a very large profit on their profit and loss account. So what's an income statement? One feature of an income statement is revenue. So what revenue is, is how much they have sold multiplied by the selling price. So if a company has sold 500 units, they sell it at $20, their total revenue will be $1,000. Cost of goods sold or cost of sales. These are the variable costs of production of a good and is usually in its materials. So for instance, a pizza will have the following variable costs, the cheese, the meatballs, the herbs, the dough, and so on and so forth. So if we make zero pizzas, our variable cost or cost of goods sold will be zero. But if we made a hundred, then that will scale to 100 items. So how we calculate cost of goods sold is the quantity multiplied by the cost of goods sold. Another feature of a balance sheet is the expenses or overhead costs or fixed costs. This is the money paid out regardless of the output. So this means that if the output of a company is zero, these expenses will still have to be paid. These include insurance, wages, rent, and interest payment on debts. The next feature of a balance sheet is the gross profit. The gross profit is a profit per unit calculated before the fixed costs are even considered. So this is the gross profit equals revenue minus cost of goods sold. So this is the profit that they make per unit sold. And it does not allow for the expenses such as rent, salaries, insurance, etc, etc. Next, we have net profit. And this is when we deduct all the expenses from the gross profit. So the calculations are as follows. Net profit equals gross profit minus expenses. So this is also known as total revenue minus cost of goods sold minus expenses. And this is the profit, the calculation for profit. Last but not least, we have retained profit. So retained profit is a leftover profit that is reinvested back into the business after all of the payments have been made. These include corporation tax, and dividends to shareholders. 
In this section, I am going to show you how to use an income statement in order to make a decision. So in my example, I have option one and option two. So which one is the better business? So in option one, I've calculated that the total revenue is $8,000. But in option two, the total revenue is $6,000. The total cost for option one is $5,000 but the total cost is $1,000 lower at $4,000. However, but lastly, the total profit for option one is $3,000, which is $1,000 more than option two. Therefore, I am going to decide that option one is the best option using my calculations. Now, moving on to the solved examination questions. Please be reminded that in the description below is a playlist on the tips and tricks of examination techniques for paper one and paper two. So this is a paper two question. This is appendix three, and this is the information that's given. So the question is as follows. Using appendix three and other information provided, consider the costs, revenue, and profit of the two options which one is the best option for QC? Justify your answer. So I've calculated that the total revenue for option one is 25,000. The total cost for option one is 10,000. The gross profit is 15,000. And the profit is 14,000. And I did exactly the same thing for option two. Total revenue, 5,000. Total cost of goods sold, $2,500. Gross profit, 2,500. And profit, $2,000. So this is where we've done all the calculations and now we need to give a justification and we need to select the best option. So for the conclusion, option two has a lower cost of goods sold at $2,500. However, option one is better. So this is the choice we're making because its total revenue is $20,000 more than option two. Its gross profit is $12,500 more than option two. And also its profit is $12,000 more than option two. And therefore option one is the better option. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.